Humphrey will get 27% of the vote and Nixon 21% of the vote for Louisiana's 10 electoral votes. So in the electoral count, we now have this uh, shape up in the nation's picture. We can show you on our map. Nixon has won a total of eight states, nine states now, uh, no, eight states with Virginia. That would be shown there in the dark colors on your black and white sets, in light blue on your color sets. Kentucky, Florida, North Carolina, uh, and Virginia in the south. Kansas and Oklahoma uh, in the Midwest and Southwest, and Indiana there. Uh, Vermont in the uh, northeastern states. Humphrey, shown there in yellow on your color sets and light on the black and white, has won four states, Connecticut with eight electoral votes, West Virginia with seven, Massachusetts with 14, and the District of Columbia with three. Wallace now has won four votes, according four states, according to our CBS News estimate, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, and Louisiana. And it might uh, be noteworthy, with Humphrey holding 53 electoral votes and Nixon 79, that at this stage in the evening, Humphrey has now, uh, if our CBS News estimates hold uh, in the final returns, has uh, done better than Goldwater did in 1964. Goldwater won 52 electoral votes, you remember. Humphreys uh, apparently has won at least 53, and he's leading for 99 others. Roger Mudd, perhaps you can tell us more about the results there in the South. Well, Walter, in Virginia, which uh, CBS News estimates now has gone for Richard Nixon, the key to Mr. Nixon's uh, victory there was uh, a good, strong run in the Richmond area. He lost the city, but he carried the suburbs, which in Richmond are very conservative. Mr. Nixon also carried the uh, suburbs in northern Virginia, just across the Potomac River from Washington, D.C., Arlington and Alexandria. In the high Democratic voting areas, uh, Nixon took one out of every two votes in Virginia. In the uh, blue-collar class in Virginia, Mr. Nixon took one out of every two votes. The uh, popular vote from Virginia shows with about a quarter of it now in, Nixon with 117,000, Wallace running a, a third, not a bad third, but still third. In Louisiana, which is now checked for George Wallace, there's no vote showing. There must be something, and we'll come back and perhaps find it a little bit later. Mississippi, another Wallace state, with 22% uh, of the popular vote in. George Wallace, no surprise there, 62,000 over Humphrey's 26,000. In Tennessee, still very much in doubt, 72% of the popular vote in. Nixon, 321,000. Wallace, 260,000. Humphrey, 212,000. In Texas, which is the large remaining block of electoral votes in the South with 25, 11% of the vote in, Humphrey has the lead. All six major candidates went into Texas in the final week of the campaign. Humphrey now running first, Nixon second, and Wallace very badly trailing in third place. And finally, in the, the North Carolina Senate race, Sam Irvin has been reelected, as expected. His opponent, Republican Bob Summers, re really never had a race to make. Everyone conceded the Senate seat to Sam Irvin. And in North Carolina's gubernatorial race, we have a winner there. Robert Scott, the present lieutenant governor, according to the CBS News estimate, has defeated Republican Jim Gardner. When all these votes are cast, the estimate is Scott 58 percent, Gardner 42 percent. Jim Gardner was the man who broke with Republican tradition and tried to go after the Wallace vote in the eastern part of the state and in so doing made the old guard Republicans in his state very angry and the division apparently has cost him the election. And one more call, uh, Walter. In the Georgia senatorial race, no surprise here, Herman Talmadge has been re-elected to the United States Senate beating his Republican opponent, uh, Earl Patton, an Atlanta businessman. Uh, Roger, don't worry about the Louisiana returns. The rider bearing them has reached Tallahassee. All is well, and you'll be here shortly. Uh, I might mention that uh, uh, we're very pleased to now have our CBS affiliate KGMB TV in Honolulu. And what is more, uh, will wonders never cease, 
two Australian stations, TCN in Sydney and GTV in Melbourne, who are joining us now. Uh, they are carrying our CBS News election coverage via Flanny Bird satellite. Other stations in Australia, Japan, and the Philippines are going to join us for this live coverage later this evening. For those of you who aren't quite so far distant and are still in the United States, continental or uh, offshore, let us remind you that the polls are still open in eight states. There's still plenty of time to cast your ballots uh, in eight of our uh, states, including Alaska and Hawaii, of course. And uh, incidentally, of course, it's not just the presidential ballot that uh, you'll be casting in those states, but 43 of our states are electing legislatures as well as electing congressmen and senators and governors, voting on a lot of propositions. And speaking of the propositions that are on the ballot, in Dearborn, Michigan. Know why cranberry juice cocktail is so great for entertaining? It's the extra use juice. Mixed with soda, it sparkles. With fruit juice, it tantalizes. And no matter how you drink it, cranberry juice cocktail has even more food energy than orange or tomato juice. Ocean Spray Cranberry Juice Cocktail, the extra use juice. Ocean Spray is ruby red and tangy. The good for you juice you drink in so many ways. So keep it at home on ice. Cranberry juice, very nice. Ocean Spray is the start of something big. Ocean Spray Cranberry Juice Cocktail. Fourteen percent of the nation's precincts counted. Richard Nixon, 41% of the vote. Humphrey, 39% of the vote. Wallace, 19% of the vote. Nixon, according to our CBS News estimate, has won eight states with a total of 79 electoral votes. Humphrey has won four states with a total of uh, 32 electoral votes. Uh, and Wallace has won a total of four states with 39 electoral votes. Humphrey's vote should be 53 electoral votes. Excuse me. Mike Wallace. Walter, Senator Jacob Javits, Republican incumbent from New York, has been returned to the Senate. He wins over Paul O'Dwyer, James Buckley. By two to one, as expected, Javits with 50% of the vote. In spite of what you see here with uh, the tabulated vote, it's still 0%. The CBS News estimate gives Javits 50% of the vote. Paul O'Dwyer, 34%. Buckley, 16%. But most interesting in the East, with massive New York State uh, still to report, the Democratic Party seems to be building toward another historic victory on the Eastern Seaboard, where it won overwhelmingly in 1964 and in 1960 with John Kennedy. In the cities of the Eastern Seaboard, Hubert Humphrey's running at least 20 percentage points ahead of Nixon. Nixon is winning in the small cities and the rural areas by about five percentage points. He's carrying the suburbs but with a 10 percentage point lead, and that's a good deal less than he needs. And perhaps the most interesting story here in the East is that despite the high racial tensions of this year, George Wallace is winning only 5 or 6 percent of the vote on the Eastern Seaboard. In cities that have been hit by riots, Wallace does no better than in other areas of the nation. Now, let's move to the New Jersey board, first of all. As you can see, Nixon is leading Humphrey, 390,000 to 353,000, with 27% of the tabulated vote in, in New Jersey. But according to our uh, CBS News estimate, with 75 of our 80 sample precincts in, Humphrey is in the lead. He is not in the lead sufficiently for us to uh, suggest that he is going to wind up the winner, but he is running a good deal stronger than had been expected in the state of New Jersey. In Newark and Jersey City, which are in effect extensions of New York City, Humphrey is getting six of every ten votes. By comparison, in Bergen and Passaic counties, which are bedroom suburbs of New York, Nixon is getting half of the votes. Nixon winning in the high income areas, Humphrey the low income areas, as expected. Let's go to New York now. Seventy-five percent of our sample precincts are in. As you can see, this New York vote, the tabulated vote, zero percent. That is not what is important. With three quarters of our sample precincts in now, uh, particularly in the city of New York, Humphrey is running well behind Lyndon Johnson in 1964, even behind John Kennedy in 1960, but not sufficiently behind to make that much of a difference. And according to the CBS News estimate, the way he is running now 
If things proceed the way they are, Humphrey will wind up with 52% of the vote here in New York State, Richard Nixon with 43%, and George Wallace with 5% in New York. The big story, of course, in New York is the New York City vote. Uh, Kennedy came into uh, New York State losing by 400,000, came into New York City losing by 400,000 back in 1960, but he rolled up almost 800,000 in New York City alone to take the state. Humphrey will not do that well, but at the moment it looks as though he's going to do well enough possibly to win. Certainly he is leading. And finally, in Pennsylvania, with a block of 29 electoral votes, with 13% of the tabulated vote counted, Nixon barely leading Hubert Humphrey, 300,000 to 200, well, it's going up a little bit, 364,000 to 352,000. But the story uh, with almost all of our, uh, with almost all of our sample precincts in, the story in uh, Pennsylvania is much the same as that in New York. Humphrey is doing two to one in the city of Philadelphia. He is doing 54 to 33 in the city of Pittsburgh. That is the crucial, those are the two crucial spots for Hubert Humphrey. If he comes out of Philadelphia with a lead of a quarter of a million, if he comes out of uh, Pittsburgh with a lead of 100,000, then it's likely that he can carry. And at the moment, he is leading in the state of Pennsylvania. And incidentally, also in Pennsylvania, uh, veteran Senator Joe Clark seems to be in trouble. He's running ahead in Philadelphia, in Pittsburgh, and in the black ghetto areas, but his opponent, Republican Congressman Richard Schweiker, is running a strong race just about everywhere else. At the moment, in the tabulated vote, they're even, but according to our uh, sample precincts, Schweiker is ahead. Walter? In Arizona, CBS News estimates that Nixon will win. Uh, that uh, southwestern state with 52% of the vote, Humphrey will get 41% and Wallace 7%. There are five electoral votes in Arizona, and that would bring Nixon's total uh, in the states where CBS News estimates he will win to 84. Uh, Humphrey has five states with a total of 53. Humphrey states are Connecticut, West Virginia, District of Columbia, Massachusetts, and Michigan. Morton Dean is with Larry O'Brien, the Democratic National Committee Chairman and the manager of the Humphrey campaign at Humphrey's headquarters in Minneapolis. Come in, Morton. Walter, I think that uh, Larry looks uh, rather relaxed at this point. Uh, Larry, are you concerned? Uh, do you think the Vice President is going to take this election? Oh, this is going to be a very close election. We're going to uh, be visiting each other off and on, I would think, over many hours. It's uh, beginning to develop as most people envisioned. It's uh, very close. We are uh, doing very well in the industrial east. Uh, we are uh, running ahead in Pennsylvania and New York, and of course have had significant wins in Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Michigan. Uh, other states are in balance, and it appears to us that we are going to uh, have an excellent showing throughout the industrial east, and that's what we anticipated. Larry, can you make a prediction now as to whether Mr. Humphrey will win the necessary 270 electoral votes? It would appear to me, uh, holding the position that we now have in the East, and going West, uh, this uh, election will be decided uh, in California, plus uh, some other states uh, in the Southwest, in the Far West. And I would say on that basis, at this early stage, uh, this evening that we are in an excellent position, very frankly, to secure the necessary number of electoral votes. I uh, sincerely believe that. This is uh, somewhat reminiscent of 1960 in many ways. In, in what ways? Well, we have this close uh, popular vote. We have uh, an eight-point spread uh, favoring Mr. Nixon uh, an hour ago, and uh, the last time I checked it, it had been reduced to a two-point spread. And uh, we're going to just uh, close that gap, and we're going to move ahead. Well, what are the big surprises, Larry O'Brien? Michigan certainly was a uh, good sign for you people. Well, I am particularly pleased to note the 61% uh, projection in Massachusetts. Uh, Connecticut was fine. Uh, I think that uh, as the uh, other uh, eastern states uh, uh, come along and you have the vote, for example, from Philadelphia, which yeah. in my judgment will show a Humphrey majority of 250,000 plus, we will carry the state of Pennsylvania. I think all of this uh, augurs well. 
it's it's a it's a tough one. It's a close one, but uh, uh -huh. we're doing very well. Morton and Larry. Yes, Walter. Uh, Larry O'Brien, this is Walter Cronkite, New York. Yes, Walter. How are you? You're looking Fine. well, despite the uh, rigors I know of these last several months. Uh, Larry, uh, while you were talking and saying that the spread was two percent, it's gone to one percent on our uh, national popular vote, with sixteen percent of the vote in. And well, up. Yeah. Frankly, Walter, I didn't expect it to move that rapidly. That took 60 seconds. Yeah. Why? Why? Uh, we we'll may see some other changes in here, of course, undoubtedly in the course of the evening. Larry, one other thing. Uh, uh, you mentioned that you think this thing will be settled in California. Uh, if you go out there with California holding the balance, I, I gather that if you say that, you're fairly confident about California. What I uh, was trying to uh, say, Waller, is that all of us are going to have a long evening and we're going to be looking uh, very carefully at California. Uh, I couldn't have been more pleased with what I observed in California just yesterday, and I'm optimistic about it. And the West Coast is uh, going to have the eyes of the, of the nation focused on it uh, in a few hours. and. It's going to be an awfully interesting night, and I don't think any of us will uh, get any sleep this, uh, this evening. Larry, there was one question I wanted to ask. In yeah. your view, how is the Wallace vote uh, cutting tonight? Well, I think that it has followed a pattern, his strength from the south. Uh, he isn't showing significant strength beyond his own <laughs> geographical area. That his current uh, figure uh, in, the, in the popular vote will drop as the... Uh, evening uh, goes along. Was he hurting your man more than Mr. Nixon at, at this point? Well, it depends on uh, which state or states may be uh, talking about. I think it varies from state to state, but perhaps the variance is rather slight overall. Uh, I uh, just uh, know this, that the current Wallace percentage of the popular, popular vote will drop in the next several hours and drop significantly. Larry O'Brien, the top man for the Democratic National Committee, thank you very much. Back to you, Walter. Uh, Martin, before you say goodbye to Larry, can I yes. ask one other question? Yes, Has any Walter. particular state surprised you, Larry, either way, going Nixon, Wallace, or for your man, Humphrey? I uh, really uh, don't think so, Walter. This is a horse race in the uh, key states. It's rather a traditional close presidential contest. I don't think there have been any particular surprises, and I think as this uh, popular vote continues to rise, uh, it will be reflected uh, as these states fall into our column. And of course, uh, most of these states have uh, significant uh, numbers of electoral votes. So here we go. <laughs> okay, Larry. We'll be coming back to you as the evening goes on, as you suggested. CBS News color coverage of election night 68 will continue in a moment. city's other problems. This is a save a city kit, one part of a large movement already underway. If you live in a city, as 70% of us do, you've got the first kit. Maybe you'd like to send for this one and see where you fit in. Write Crisis Care of Postmaster New York 10001. This is brought to you by the Institute of Life Insurance on behalf of the life insurance companies in America. Life companies are investing a billion dollars to help rehabilitate our cities because we fit in too. 16% of the national vote counted now. Nixon holds a 1% lead, 41% to Humphreys, 40 and Wallace is 19. Dan Rather, how's the Middle West going? Well, Walter, uh, no surprise. There are a good, good many surprises in the Middle West, but no surprise. Uh, Hubert Humphrey, uh, it appears, is doing very well in his home state of Minnesota, and we may have a little bit more to report on that for you in a few seconds. The major story in the Midwest uh, is Ohio, Illinois, and Missouri. All of those big electoral vote states, Ohio and Illinois with 26, and uh, Missouri with 12. And even at uh, this hour, all of those are simply uh, at a state where we don't see any trend. And there are two surprises in that that the Republicans had expected to run away with Illinois and to do very well uh, in Ohio. Missouri was always considered rather close, but leaning Nixon. And uh, as of this hour, it is simply a, a no-trend case, although we have a rather substantial number of our sample precincts reporting in all three of those states. 
And uh, the Democrat, uh, Hub Hubert Humphrey, is actually leading in the actual vote figures in Illinois, but that's only with 11% of the vote in. Now, in the Minnesota presidential race, uh, CBS News estimates that Humphrey wins in Minnesota. Now, that is the second state in the Midwest in which CBS News estimates Humphrey has won, Michigan with 21 electoral votes being the other. And in Minnesota, CBS News estimates that Humphrey carries his home state with 56% uh, to Nixon's 38%, George Wallace with 5%. Walter, it's still a heart stopper in Ohio and Illinois, and that's the big story in the Midwest. This is Walter Cronkite at CBS News Election Headquarters. This is CBS.